landed here now, so what are the plans? So the plans are right now to really build our office here in Adelaide. We have an office in, in Brisbane, in Perth, in, in Melbourne, uh, a small office in Sydney, but I think right now we want to actually establish our, our roots and the foundation here in Adelaide, so we're looking at different office properties. Um, we feel that this will be a sustainable organization and we, there's just so much energy and, and activities going on right now in Adelaide. So that's going to be the next step for us this year is opening up an office in Adelaide. You recently announced a, um, an agreement with the South Australian government to develop the virtual shipyard project, which yeah. sounds fascinating. Can you tell us a bit about that? So we're extremely excited about this project because it's really focusing on the SMEs and the SMEs to be able to tap into the incredible amount of investment that's going on in South Australia around the submarines and, and the ships. I, I, I've seen figures up the $90 billion in the next 10, 20 years being invested into South Australia around this. So um, historically, we know that it's difficult for SMEs to change the DNA to become a supplier for a different product or solution. So we want to tackle this from uh, addressing the gaps, the technology gaps, as well as figuring out the workforce of the future and which um, students can graduate and have the skills that, are, that enable them to really jump into a situation where they can learn that technology and really help the SMEs out as well. It, it's fascinating because obviously there's a focus on students and university students and the uh, increased focus on STEM, but not many organisations have actually focused on those existing SMEs, yes. which is why many of them get left by the wayside. Right. So I'm delighted to hear that that's been a real target for you, uh, for Dasso. Yeah, I think it's it's we know that. Uh, it won't be easy, we know there's challenges, and, but we're excited that there are challenges and, and there's a, where there's a will, there's a way. There's passion, there's, there's incredibly innovative people who want to change and they see the opportunity. So I think we're, we're, we're invested into this journey, we're excited about it, we have people who really believe in this project. So. Uh, we're confident that things are going to work out. Yeah. So clearly defence is a focus, um, but there are many subjects that we're discussing here today in, in the forum. So tell us about some of those others. And I know there was a, a wonderful discussion around space. Yes. So I think if we think about outside of, of shipbuilding and, and submarines, we would look at mining, um, architecture and construction and, and space. Uh, mining is a place... Uh, an industry that's a little bit close to my heart lately because it's new to me, but I've been learning about how important it is to the world and the world of material sciences and how everything that we do is really originating from the mining companies. Um, the challenges that the mining companies have had has forced them to also innovate and really think about how they transform their whole process. So we're excited about a lot of different initiatives and projects happening in Australia driven by Australian companies that really are taking digitization seriously and looking at their whole process that hasn't changed in, in a good number of years. Uh, and also when we start talking about smart cities, I think for many uh, people, smart cities was an interesting concept, but it was very difficult to get their heads around the tangible benefits. But yes. clearly that thinking has evolved over the past few years. It has, I think, and it still means different things for different different people. But I think one of the things that's it's really important is the ability to make decisions for the city that are in the interest of the best of, of the the people of the city and to be able to communicate that and having a platform for decision making and communication is really what the, the advantage of a, a, a digital uh, platform. Uh, so talking about a digital platform I know out in the playground which is very well named that there are some wonderful experiences can you tell us what some of those uh, experiences are like? Sure. So one of the things that I'd like to focus on is we actually built, with the data that's publicly available of Adelaide, what a virtual Adelaide city would look like. So you can actually go in there and look at real data that's engineering grade of what the city of Adelaide will look like. I saw my office. I was so excited. <laughs> And if you know, one of the other things that we have is the 3D goggles. Now we didn't have that with the map of, Ad of Adelaide, but you can actually picture a demo where you can fly around the city, and figure out all the different vantage points, areas, where to put a an antenna. So there's different demos that show the power of 3D and decision making and, and ideation creation and innovation. Because uh, apart from me looking at my office, but clearly <laughs> the, the bonus of that sort of uh, data-driven technology is that you can forward model the impact of a whole variety of changes. Yes, I think the, the real planning of something and taking into all the different what-if scenarios is an incredible challenge for many people. When it comes to product development, to city planning, I think the, the ability to federate through all that data, getting it into one central repository, which we call our 3D experience platform, will be very beneficial and be able to look at that in a very logical way and have other people look at that and collaborate with us. 
Um, it's interesting that our focus on STEM, science, technology, engineering yeah. and math, has really come back into the fore. Do you fear that we may have skipped a generation? We're very keen on it now, but it, yeah, it, it worries me that there was a, a very different focus, say, 20 years ago. As a, as a company that's been focusing on that for 40 some odd years, I think that hasn't changed for us. Yeah. I think we're, um, it's great to have governments and leaders and companies Focus, focusing on that again. Sometimes it's it's difficult and people want, are shying away from it because it is difficult. Understanding processes, understanding science and technology, but that's what we do is our DNA and, and we're just happy that people are refocusing on that. Again. Uh, the opportunities in Australia seem almost boundless. What do you see as, I don't know, your five-year projection? What would you like to see in the way that Australia looks at Dassault Systems and thinks of their input? So I think we would like to change the lives of the SMEs and the students. I think what five years down the road, if we see SMEs are successful in the supply chain, um, I think there'll be a, a great satisfaction um, from our, our team that we did some good into, you know, we're a company that's ranked in many publications as the most sustainable and we want to see our customers and our partnerships blossom and, and we're really results focused and we're passionate about making these programs work. So I think that would be really great. I've, I've heard you speak passionately about innovation and sustainability, and that really sums up what you do. As a company, that's, that's our, our DNA. Um, our Bernard Child, as our CEO, really drives us a universe where we're trying to link product, nature, and life, and that's really the, our, our vision statement. And if you look at everything that goes around in the world now, we don't look at just product and features now. You look at the interaction between the product and nature, the product and the human interaction. So I, I think that's, that's a lot of data, that's a lot of different aspects, but that sums up what we do in, in our DNA very well. Well, it's sounding like a very bright future. Um, thank you so much for joining us, Sox. My pleasure. Appreciate Thank you very your time. much. Thank you.